welcome students to sv union high school and junior college today we are going to study evs2 chapter 2 history and the concept of time so today we are going to learn lesson 2 evs2 history and the concept of time there are different methods of reckoning time time is continuous but for our convenience easiness we divide it into periods the method that we use for reckoning time depends on our purpose for dividing it in that manner in which we do it for example at sunrise we say it is morning now the day has begun at sunset it is evening now and soon it will be night at the end of the day it is becomes dark and then it is night this means that we divide the day into two parts day and night our earth rotates around its axis at a certain speed similarly it also revolves around the sun the sun has its own light we receive the light from the sun however we see light only in the day time nights are darker how does this happen our earth rotates around its axis that part of its surface which turns towards the sun becomes bright that part that moves away from the sun is into the darkness the earth takes 24 hours to complete one rotation around its axis 24 hours approximately divided into 12 hours of daytime and 12 hours of night a period of a daytime and the following night together make one day seven days from monday to saturday make one week two weeks make a fortnight four weeks make a month 12 months make a year in this manner we reckon time in a bigger and bigger units one year is followed by another and when 100 years go by a century is completed when 10 years century that is 1000 years are gone a millennium is completed such a method of dividing time is known as unilinear division of time the common era or the christian era in the unilinear division of time years follow one after the other are arranged in a serial order in history books we also have a chain of events that follow one after the other in present in a linear or a serial manner for this usually we refer to common era or christian era we write as anno domini which means in the year of christian era the calendar we use today is based on christian era this era began in the memory of jesus christ the first year of this era is the year when it began it is shown with the number 1 the years after that are indicated by the next number in the serial order the first 100 years that is the first century of this era is written as 100 common era or 1 to 100 ad the period of the first millennium of this era is written as 1 to 1000 common era or 1 to 1000 ad the time before the common era or the christian era the period before the common era is known as the time before common era bce or before christ bc the years of this period are counted and written in the reverse order the first century before the common era began at 100 years bce and ended with 1 bce similarly the first millennium before the common era began with the year 1000 bce and ended before the common era indicate as 100 to 1 bce and first millennium before the common era indicated 1000 
to 1 BC. Let us look at some examples of these methods of indicating time before common era or Christian era. The lifetime of Vardhamana Mahavir is written as 599 BC to 527 BC. The lifetime of Gautam Buddha is written as 563 BC to 483 BC. In this manner we know the Vardhamana Mahavir and Gautam Buddha's birth and death. Measure of time Measure of time and the method of measuring time. To measure time is to measure the length of time. We know the following units of measuring time. Second, minute, hour, day, week, fortnight, month, year, century and millennium. A second is the smallest of these units. There are various methods of measuring time in different parts of the world. Of these the common or the Christian era is the most widely used. We generally indicate the particular day by writing the date of the that date. The date consists of serial numbers of that day, followed by the name or serial number of the current month and then the serial number of the current year. There are many methods, uh, other methods too. We have to see that the Christian era began memory of the Jesus Christ. It is an old age old custom to start the new era, commentate a special event for example the coronation of the great king. We know that Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj had started a new era or Shaka known as Raja Abhishek Shaka in 16. 1974 AD to commemorate his coronation. Shahi Vahan, Shaka and Vikramas Samavat are the two eras that are used in India. The founder of the Islam prophet Muhammad migrated from Mecca to Mid Medina. The Hijri era was started to commemorate this event. The Parsi community in India uses this Shehen Shahi era. Historical period. We learn in the first lesson that history is a science that tells us about the events that happened in the past. We also learn that every bygone moment makes up the past. The past is the subject matter of history. In a broad sense, the period of history goes back to the time of the birth of our solar system. A solar system came into being about 4.5 billion years ago. Our Earth is a planet in the solar system. So, it is presumed that Earth was also formed 4.5 billion years ago. The span of 4.5 billion years since the Earth's formation is a vast period of time. It is not easy to grasp this entire period all at once. It is necessary to divide it into a number of stages in order to understand it better. Therefore, the time in history is divided into two main periods, the prehistoric period and historic period. Prehistoric period, simply prehistoric period means before history. The prehistoric period is the period for which no written records are available by which to write its history. Historical period, the historical period is for which the his written records are available using which can be written history or can be write history. Scientific method, the carbon-14 analysis and the tree ring analysis dentochronological Scientific method of measuring time and establishing age dating. We are actually measuring time when we talk about today's date or day or week, etc. We have seen that there are various methods of measuring time. These methods allow us to identify a particular day, month or year with respect to an earlier or a later day, month or year. 
For example, if it is June, then we know that the earlier month was May and the next month will be July. May. If today it is 10th of June, we can tell that tomorrow will be the 11th of June and yesterday will be the 9th of June. Thus, we measure time. We actually measure its length. The events before beginning of common era mentioned as having occurred before the common era. Information about these events can only be obtained with the help of evidence buried under the ground. This evidence is usually in the form of broken man-made artifacts and fallen structures. With the help of these remains and using scientific method, we can determine the time of the event that took place thousands of years ago. There are many layers of soil deposited one below above the other under the surface of the ground. The period of these layers and the remains found in them cannot be stored, stated definitely in terms of dates. However, a rough estimate of how many years ago these existed can certainly be made using scientific methods such as carbon-14 analysis, tree ring analysis, dendrochronological, etc. This method are known as dating techniques. By using these dating techniques, we learn how old the layers of the soil and the remains found in them are. Then we can determine their period approximately. For example, if an earthen pot is estimated to be 5000 years old with the help of dating techniques, we can say that the earthen pot dates back roughly to 3000 BC, then we can conclude that the period of the culture to which the pot belongs must be around 3000 BC or before Christ. So this pot was around 3000 BC. It is possible to decide the age of an ancient object up to 60,000 years old with the help of the carbon-14 method. This method was invented by the scientist Williard Libby. Dating methods. Carbon-14 is a radioactivity element that is found in the bodies of all living organisms. After the death of an organism, the bones, fossils, etc. from the prehistoric period are found. It is possible to measure the remaining C14 in a laboratory. By measuring the remaining C14 in that object, we can know how old that object is. The scientific method of determining the approximate age of an object. There are few methods of other dating methods, but the C14 method is one of the most frequently used once the age of an ancient object is determined with the help of this and other dating methods, it is possible to determine the period of the culture to which these objects belong. Then it can be placed on the unilinear timeline as the tree grows in height, the trunk also grows in the grit, a new ring appears. For every year of the growth of the grit, the rings can be seen when the tree is cut. If we count the rings, we come to know the age of the tree. This can also be determined the age of the wooden artifact. This method is known as the tree ring method or dendrochronological method. So here we learn about the age of the tree through the rings which grow interior of the tree. Here are the question answers that you are supposed to write. Answer the for each question in one sentence. The next is about the methods such as carbon analysis, tree rings analysis and geological. The next question, answer the following questions in brief. What is meant by the unilinear division of time?
So here you can write this answer in your notebook and complete the notes. Thank you students.